All right, everyone, welcome to another episode of Coral Living. I've got a great episode uh, that I'm pretty jazzed and pumped about. Uh, tonight, we are going to talk about uh, witches and witchcraft. And I decided uh, that I would bring on a special guest to the show. <laughs> Beside me, I have Lacey Punky Piper, who is a... Um, self-identified modern day witch uh doing her best to get her message out there do her thing and uh thanks for coming on the show thanks for having me this is so fun <laughs> <laughs> so i have a lot of questions there's a lot to talk about should um, we tell people that we've known each other for like 20 years first? <laughs> well we've known each other for a long time um there was a little bit of a gap in yeah, there yeah. yeah we just reconnected yeah we just reconnected uh i was able to get in touch with Lacey. she had moved back closer to where i live and she was doing reiki sessions and i'd never done anything like that in my life before that'll have to be another episode that i'll do just on my experience and that interesting <laughs> uh phenomenon there um but uh, yeah, we got connected again. It was a great experience. Uh, my wife came with me and uh, we did like a couples Reiki session, which was pretty cool. Uh, and then I asked Lacey if uh, she'd like to be on the show and talk a little bit uh, more about what she does. So uh, I also uh, recognize that uh, in, in 2021, Witches seem to be uh, becoming more popularized. They're becoming more free, liberated, and have the ability to uh, come out. Uh, and I think a lot of uh, the stigmas are coming down uh, from, from witchcraft and uh, a lot of new understanding. And that's what I want to do here tonight is uh, maybe uh, help uh, people see a new side to witches and witchcraft that they may not have uh, known before and maybe uh, get rid of some of the stigmas that uh, have been built up, some of the falsehoods and uh, some of uh, the truer natures of what's actually going on. So what better way to do that than to actually have a live witch with us? <laughs> so uh, do you ever, is it weird when someone identifies you as a witch? Does it feel not anymore, no. Yeah? Uh, it did at one time. It felt uncomfortable, uh, especially in like maybe a public situation or certain people were less comfortable, but um, no, I feel like I can own it at this point. That's, <laughs> that's great. So I thought maybe a good place to begin at would be, uh, let's get a, maybe a definition on the table. What does it mean to be a a witch, a modern day witch in 2021. What, how could you define a witch? Hmm. Um, that is tough. Uh, it's, it's just such a personal um, definition, you know, so I can really only speak for myself and any of my answers yeah. are just from my experience. Um, and please take things with a grain of salt. <laughs> well, I've gathered that in my studies that, that, that they're, you know, uh, there's a lot of different beliefs uh, that overall, like evolve, revolve around witchcraft, and uh, you know not everyone's belief systems, you know, might be exactly the same. So, mm -hmm. in your experience, what do you think? Like, what does it mean to you? Um, so for me, yeah, there's so many different levels, and, and I'm still, you know, discovering that, and um, always finding new pieces of what resonates and, you know, things, tools to add to my, to my spiritual basket kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but basically it's been this process of, uh, developing a, you know, super deep, um, connection and relationship with mother earth and, um, being of service to her in any, any way that I can. That's what I ask to do every morning when I wake up. Um, and I really try to appreciate, uh, the, you know, the nature around me, and I receive messages from animals, um, you know, and people throughout my day, um, which are all interactions of spirit. So, um, you know, for me, it's it's a lifestyle and just this nature-based spirituality, really. Yeah, that does definitely uh, seems to be a, a common thread that uh, I've discovered among, you know, uh, witches and stuff like that, this natural connection with the earth and stuff like that. Now, uh, maybe, uh, you know, with whatever you're comfortable with, 
I'm sure this has been kind of a journey for you of self-discovery and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could take us just far enough back to where this kind of all began for you. How did this kind of develop and grow? Why did you find this unique lifestyle? Oh, God. Um, so, like, now I realize, um, you know, that it was there very naturally as a child. I was doing things that I'm doing now, um, you know, communicating with animals, um, you know, spending time in nature as much as I could. Um, and just really having, you know, a reverence. Um, I was always, like, really empathic as a child and um, was having psychic experiences and didn't realize it. So um, I turned it all off uh, with alcohol <laughs> for a long time. It's a really common thread in, in a lot of people's story that are on this journey too um, because it's so overwhelming and um, if you don't have a resource or a mentor or somebody you know to reach out to it can be scary um, mm -hmm. um, and overwhelming for sure so yeah it's definitely been a journey I feel of like I dip my toe in and I get freaked out and you know pull back and there's all these um, societal stereotypes and pressures and conditioning um, to deal with as well right um, so yeah it's been huge and then you know past life and personal experience around the witch wound is also huge for so many women. So, um, hell yeah, it's been a journey. <laughs> <laughs> so, here's a question for you: Can can anyone can anyone get into witchcraft? And if you can, like, what would be signs to someone? You know, a, a, like a light bulb going off that maybe this is something that you know you should take a look at, or maybe you should you know. Take a take another look at. Mm, okay, yeah. So um, I don't know. Do you burn incense? Do you you know light candles uh, with intention? Do you use herbs in your cooking? You're a fucking witch. <laughs> <laughs> Straight to the point. You know what I mean. <laughs> um, you know, and if you're not comfortable with that term, that's fine. But um, it's basically like really owning your womanhood on a deep level and but men can be witches as well right so okay. i don't want to just stereotype that but this is from my um, yeah you know my take i can't speak for the men view um because it is um such a big part of it is connecting with your womanhood and you know the mother part of the earth and the mother part of yourself so um, which is in all of us, you know, I, I don't know where you're at with that, but, um, you know, I believe we, we all have the divine feminine and divine masculine within us. So, um, it's about nurturing that part of yourself, you know, and connecting with the mother who is mother to us all. Um, so really it's, it's about connecting with everything and everyone. So. Oh. Can you remember, can you remember the point when you like said you were, when you said to yourself, I'm a witch. Can you remember that point? Yeah, I think so. And uh, like we talked about, like I'm sure everyone else knew before I did, <laughs> or was like ready to be out with it. I yeah. call it like coming out of the broom closet. Um, yeah, and there was like times. I think it was actually like partying with you one time, maybe with and Heather, and we were like pretending to be witches, and it was like, yeah, that's. It's probably there. Like, why was it? Why was it feels that? so natural. And, like, every Halloween, I'd be a witch. And it's like, it just, <laughs> yeah, it just felt so natural for sure. But I had all this, like, um, jargon in my head about what a witch, you know, was, right? And it's so stereotypical that it's, like, this green faced, monstrous head. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. somebody who's evil. So um, I really shied away from it, I think, uh, because of that. So I'm so grateful for, like, Instagram and <laughs> the yeah. internet because it's made it so mainstream which I mean I have some struggles with that as well um, you know you can like pick up a witch kit at any local oh, yeah. <laughs> store now but um, and so it does kind of it commercializes it a little bit but yeah. to me you know the point is that we're cutting through the, the bullshit and um, and it's becoming that easy and accessible so yeah that's cool I'll focus on that um, yeah. Mm, definitely come a long way. Now, um, so here's kind of like a fun question. question. Do, do witches, 
like to gather together. Like, here's a classic stereotype of witches around the cauldron, yeah. you know, <laughs> you know, making spells and woo. Uh, but, 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 like, is it kind of like a, like, is it a, a collective thing and a unique thing, or is it more a collective thing than a unique thing, or is it more of a solo journey? Mm. Like, what would, what do you think? Uh, um, I would have to say both, to be honest. Um, I have been, it's been hugely solo for me, a lot of it, because um, it's just this deep personal learning. So, yeah. and, it, and it is a lot of solitary time in, the, in nature. That's what, you know, the definition of pagan is really, yeah. um, is being quiet in nature. <laughs> yeah. um, so, um, but then, you know, when you can, uh, when you can connect with other witches, um, it's amazing. It feels awesome. So, I host a new moon circle at our homestead. I've been, uh, we've been doing that um, all summer and... What was that? You did a what moon? New moon circle. A new moon circle. So yeah. what, what's a new moon circle? I want to know what that is. So they are just for women. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, it is traditionally it was a time where women would gather around their cycle, um, would usually be synced up with the new moon. Um, so they would gather at that time when they are most um, intuitive and powerful. Um, but also to, you know, support each other in, in that time because it is um, overwhelming for us sometimes too. Yeah. So, um, so I just feel called to bring back that tradition and, you know, women have become so disconnected in our society now. We used to gather in community to do our laundry, to take care of our children, you know, to do our daily tasks. Um, and today we do all of those things at home and we don't even talk on the phone anymore. Very often it's very, you know, text and email and stuff like that. So it's very impersonal for yeah. a lot of women. Um, so we've really lost that connection, unfortunately. Um, and we live in this super fast paced society where, um, you know, nobody takes that time for themselves either, a lot of people, so. Yeah, it's definitely important, I think, to build up that connection with, you know, whatever you're doing, you know, it's uh, especially now, like, of course, obviously, we're living in the day and age where everyone's locked in their homes and they can't do anything. But, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I guess doing your best to try and get out there. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun, you know, getting together. That's uh, That sounds uh, pretty pretty cool that you get to do that. Now, uh, now that's kind of like the collective part. And then I guess you said there's also the solo the solo journey part of it. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you find that, like, a, like how often do you get together with other people, like, like-minded uh, thinkers? Um, well, now I do, like, uh, every other weekend, my witchy girlfriend comes up and we do stuff together. Oh, okay. So that's been fun. Um, but up until then, I, it was a lot of solitary stuff. I was living up north and uh, felt like the only witch around, so <laughs> yeah. it's pretty, um, a lot of, um, solitary journey there a lot of time in the woods um but it really helped me heal and um you know find parts of myself that i don't believe i would have otherwise if i had been distracted um with other things so i'm really grateful for that time um, as much as sometimes i was like ah this is boring get me out of here <laughs> so is there is there a hierarchy in witchcraft is there like a head? Yeah, there is. There, so there can be. Um, I, I don't, like there's Wicca, which is actually classified as a religion. Okay. Uh, which I have no interest in. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, there's too many rules for me. Okay. <laughs> and I actually have no interest in the hierarchy, uh, you know, System. either. So yeah, that's, to me, that that's just so, defeats the purpose. Um, yeah. So there, there's, I'm reading a book right now called Witch by uh, Lisa Lister, and it's amazing. Anybody, for anybody who's interested, I would highly mm -hmm. recommend it. It's an easy read. Nope, so. Yeah. Um, and so she goes through like all the different types of witchcraft and kind of explains them briefly. And there's probably like, I don't know, a good 15 or 20 just in her little um, blurb there. So, and then, and then, like I said, it's such a personal journey as well. So um, any solitary witch kind of has their own classification of it, right? Yeah. Well, my next question, I feel like you may have already kind of answered it, but is there any, like, deeming of witches? Like, this, like, do you come to the conclusion, like, I am definitely a witch, or do you have to be, like, sworn in mm. as, like, a graduate? Um, so, in, in those more, like, organized ones, like Wicca, there is definitely um, 
a process like that, yeah, because they they have the hierarchy, so there's like a, a high priestess and high priest and different levels uh, like that. So yeah, there's like this initiation and this very sacred process to that, yeah. Um, but for me, I haven't really uh, delved into that very much. <laughs> and so what type of like uh, uh, ceremonies do witches like practice like what are some common ceremonies like you've mentioned one the new the, the new moon one right yeah that's a pretty common one or full moon gatherings as well are quite common um basically we live our life around the moon so um anything to do with that is like a reason to celebrate for us <laughs> yeah so, um i like i'm a celtic witch so i follow the celtic calendar um so uh, halloween is actually new year for us uh so i always like kind of struggle with these uh, holidays, it's, it's, I'm just doing something a little different yeah, than yeah. most people. Um, but it's fun and I'm happy, you know, to share with that about people. So, um, yeah. Well, you, okay, so you, <laughs> kind of, you, you, you brought me into the next question. I, because you said you're a Celtic witch, right? And it sounds like there's a lot of different types of witches and mm -hmm. like uh, the practices that they do. Could you name like a few of them? I know, I don't know if there's like a million of them, but. Yeah. Um, and maybe yeah, show, so the, maybe what, they're, what they focus in. Like if one's like a healer or one's, you know. Yeah, it's all, you know, all based off healing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, using plants basically for healing is, is, you know, one of the main criteria I would say. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to think now, I'm like on the spot, there's like a, I know there's one specifically called, I think, like the Alexandrian kind of uh, network, and it was, you know, started by a man with that name. Um, and so it's like his version of things, you know, organized by him kind of thing and carried on. Um, I'm trying to think of what I've just read in the book too, but now it's like, oh, <laughs> mind blanking out. Um, so then, like I said, there's the Druid is what really calls to me. That's one of the Celtic, the, like the super old Celtic um, uh, sources. And uh, the Norse and Viking stuff also really calls to me as well. Um, so like the runes are something I think we talked about when you came over. Yeah. Um, that I've been looking into, I feel really called to from the Norse stuff. Um, the Celtic stuff, I really um, feel called to the the womanhood of that and like connecting women to their um, womb space and just empowerment uh, through through the Celtic side of things can be because before like patriarchy, they had things going on like there was equality and women could um, you know feel safe to be in their power. So um, I really honor that and that's you know that's my heritage as well. So. Um, that one really always speaks to me. And if I come away from it, I always end up coming back to it. <laughs> well, the origins the origins of witchcraft, are they, are they from Europe? Are they I would, from? yeah, I would say so. Okay. Now, I, I was fascinated to discover that, like, Don't correct, me if, I'm, it could be correct me if I'm wrong, but is it not true that there seems to be a strong tie to, like, Eastern mysticism? with the meditative aspects of, and you were pointing out chakras and stuff to me, I thought, I didn't know that, like, because I've been into witch shops before, and it seemed like there was, like, half, like, very witchy stuff, and then lots of, like, Buddha dolls and mm. and uh, meditative things, and I don't know, like, do you, do you notice that? The, yeah, oh, yeah, it? for sure. Um, I didn't know witches meditated. I had no clue that that was a thing. Oh, yeah, it's very common. They're very similar because it's all about energy, right? So, um, we're, you know, when we're working with the earth, it's energy, and everything is energy. So, we have to work really hard to keep our energy clear, um, you know, and uh, connected so that we can do the work that we do. So, yeah, it's very, very similar, for sure. I meditate every day. Oh, huh, that's good. So well, that leads me into my next question, which I was going to say, I was going to ask you about kind of like your day to day lifestyle. Like the, obviously it seems like the more that you, uh, get into this, the more, you know, it seems to seep into your everyday living lifestyle. Mm -hmm, big time, um, yeah. so what are like on an average day, what are like the common 
day practices of, you know, I guess we can only speak for you, but yeah. what, what do you find in terms of uh, witchcraft, how it's in your day-to-day -day lifestyle? Uh, so ritual is huge for us. That's like super important. Uh, so I start my day ritually always, um, you know, unless something throws me completely haywire, but um, I find that it just completely changes my day if I stick, I call it my power hour when I <laughs> get going in the morning. Uh, it usually takes longer than that, but <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just my time. You know, I get up super early before everyone in the house and um, I just enjoy that silence. Um, I enjoy watching the sun come up. That's like um, just part of how I connect with the earth. I say, um, uh, uh, there's one prayer I say always, um, when I wake up, I, I burn sage or lavender or whatever I have. Um, I like candles, I do a bit of reading and like journaling and meditating. Um, every morning that I do some yoga or mo a movement medicine of some sort. Um, and that just helps me, uh, you know, get my energy clear and connected and ready for the day. And then I feel like I'm more receptive, um, you know, to the messages and you know, to seeing things in, um, from a higher perspective, really, you know, um, when I start my day that way, so I can be of more service, I can be more useful, I can be more patient, you know, with people, and, uh, and just be a better human, really. Well, <laughs> hey, it's not, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, uh, here's something fun, magic, everyone loves the magic side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. What is what is magic? Oh Jesus! What? Um, <laughs> I know that's a loaded question. Sparkles. Um, sparkles. <laughs> Jesus, everything is magic to me at this point. It's awesome. Um, <laughs> Life is magic. Oh, it is. Like to, to one. So my favorite line is like, you have to believe in magic for it to happen. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you're going around, like, not aware or looking for it or, you know, wanting to, even being open to letting it in, then it's not going to find you or appear, you know? It's going to have, well, it'll have to hit you over the head with a two by four, but um, at this point, I, I live a very magical life every day because I choose to, you know? Like, I yeah, that, that I makes sense. choose to uh, look for those little things and appreciate them so more of them are attracted to me, right? When you... Um, are focused on that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but my definition of magic might be different than other people's. Like, you know, the sunshine on a tree stump in the forest is magical to me. Um, and that, those little things like that just make my day. Um, earlier today, I took this little girl down to my fairy forest and uh, she was like giving them flowers and um, we saw these little moths in the sun and she's like, oh, there's real fairies over there. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so, um, that's magical to me, oh. like, just to, you know, to see her imagination light up like that. Um, and I do believe in fairies, so I'm not bullshitting this kid, but, um, yeah, everything, you know, the fact that I wake up in the morning is fucking magical. <laughs> like, yeah, hey, you know? <laughs> uh, I was just, we were, I was just talking about this on my last podcast with my brothers, we were talking about... Am I allowed to swear on here, James? <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> you should have known, everybody. Don't worry, just, whenever Justin's on here... He oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to have to get all of us on here with that. <laughs> I'm sure he will have to do that, because mm. we... Uh, I, I really wanted this episode uh, just because I had so many questions and yeah. I, I was just like, I'm going to just ask her. For that. <laughs> 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 I just wanted to get uh, get it all out there. But I, do you think there's like kind of like a a, a law of attraction -y kind of uh, tie to magic, yes, where yes. it's like the uh, the intention and the focus you put on something. Uh, um, usually law of attraction has to do with like manifesting and bringing about, uh, things through, you know, your will and your power, your energy, mm -hmm. focusing in on it. Yeah. seems like to be a strong tie. It reminds me a lot about the law of attraction. Yeah, when totally. I think of, which is talking about magic, mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that. Now, do you have a spell book? Um, I call it, yeah, like a, a grimoire or a shadow book is a common name for it. Oh, them. I was going to ask you, you have a shadow book. Yeah. I was yeah. like, this is a very common thing, with, yeah. which is this, this, the shadow book. Yeah, the book of shadows. The book of shadows. Is it? Shadows. Yeah. Is it yeah. I was good at, that was like my last question. Was, was like, the, book of, the book of shadows. <laughs> That's too I was funny. like, I was like, I got to ask about this book I of have, shadows thing. I have tons of books. Like, um, 
yeah, I keep like, you know, pressed flowers in there, like um, when I'm learning about new crystals or uh, Reiki stuff or like any magical experience that I had, I, I write it in there. Um, it's, there's nothing bad in there, like uh, plant, any plant medicine that I learn, I keep in there. So um, are these like, are, is it is it like a spells that you're writing in there? Or is it more of a, or is it a journal or is yeah. it a self-reflection? Yeah, a lot of that. Um, and just a lot of what I'm learning, like, um, you know, anything that, that I'm learning about on the journey, my, my, I mean, you, I don't know, I can't keep all of this stuff straight. So, um, yeah, it's just a documentation of your journey, really, I would say. Yeah. Um, and, and there are times, you know, when you're doing deep, dark work, like that's part of, I think, maybe the aspect that scares people is that, like, there's no room for bullshit here. You you have to see through all of your own crap um, to walk this path. So kind of like tackling your ego. Yeah, big time, big time. So um, I mean, we're all at different levels there, um, at different times, right? Um, there's, yeah. There's days where I'm not I'm not where I want to be with that. So um, yeah. So um, do do spells get passed down through tradition from oh, other... Could. Yeah, so that's one of the types of witches is uh, generational, I think they call it, maybe. Okay. So that's when you're like a straight bloodline witch and you would have hereditary stuff passed down to you, like spells, and you would be taught things by your grandma and your mom. Um, but that's pretty uncommon these days. Uh, my mom would never, ever dare call herself a witch, even though she is doing things that... <laughs> Are quite witchy, but she doesn't know that and would never. I was like, I love you, mom. Yeah. No. <laughs> She's okay with me being a witch, but I really don't think she would ever call herself that. Uh, and have you ever uh, created a, like, purposely created a spell yourself? Hmm. Well, I guess it depends on what you call a spell. I suppose, but I don't. Mine's a little bit different than some people. It's like, oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, I have, but like um, I can't tell you what I did with this. <laughs> no, I don't know. It just I think a lot of people have like this really different version of what a spell actually is worked out. It is just like what you're saying, like law of attraction. Strong intention. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's just kind of like not even manipulating energy, but like you know, utilizing it and working with it. Yeah, I definitely yeah, I get what you're saying. The, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a, and there's a lot of like um, honoring and, and reverence involved like so for me um, when I'm doing like solitary work it, it's really like taking time out to honor the goddesses um, the goddess within myself um, and really honor you know nature and mother earth on a really deep level and uh, you know have conversations with them at, at times if they're open or in your open so it's pretty cool I'm glad you just said that because you touched <laughs> on all of the things I wanted because you like went through a whole cycle of things there, uh, like Mother Nature and goddesses and all. How how is all that work? It seems like there's like this <laughs> echelon of like of, of deities. Yeah. It's like uh, is this like Hinduism where there's like a million gods and goddesses, or is it, it like? It kind of seems like that. I don't. Know. I feel like it's. Maybe not a million, but, uh, and it depends what, you know, aspect you're into. And I try to stay open, you know, to anything really. Yeah. Um, and it, tribal stuff really resonates with me. So, um, I'm always interested in that. So yeah, I, there's like endless goddesses there for me to discover, but. Does it all come back to say one source energy? I know some people use all types of terms like the universe or source or Yeah, God. basically, like I use spirit as my, is the one, yeah. you know, term to sum it all up because it is all the same thing, basically. We're all the same energy. It's all made of the same shit. So yeah, in, in an easy way to, like, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and, and then, so like, I, I know I'm sorry to get all theological with you here. <laughs> and then, then, then like, so from source, does God like manifest itself in like smaller versions of God to like, uh, mm -hmm. cause I know that that's like in Hinduism. In Hinduism, there's like the main head, there's like, which is the oneness of everything. Mm -hmm. And then it, it manifests its own being through gods, which then like create humans. And then like, yeah. and there's like this like pyramid 
factor going on. Yeah. Is that kind of what's going on? Maybe. Um, but I, for me, like, uh, what really attracts me to the Celtic and Norse stuff is the ideal of equality. And so I'm, like, really, um, I, I just find myself really resistant to anything with any kind of hier- hierarchy like yeah, that. Yeah, um, I hear you. So for me, I just like to think of us all on the same level. But, yeah, it is, like, you know, the idea that we came from the gods and, and source. Yeah, like, we are all of the same, right? So we are, so we are equal to me, right? Like, yeah. So, it, like, um, and here's where I guess maybe the tie from witchcraft and Eastern mysticism kind of maybe come together or find some uh, place of meeting is in, uh, do you think witchcraft would be like a non-dualist belief system where, like, there is only one? Hmm. There's only one thing. Because, uh, like, a, the dualistic perspective would be that there is, like, a dif- there is a separation between the finite reality and, and, uh, and the holy God or mm-hmm. whatever is mm-hmm. presides over it. Um, but I find even in Christianity, I know, uh, like, a like, a Islam, Judaism, Christian, they would consider some themselves to probably be dualistic religions where there's a hierarchy, like a hierarchy where there's God and then everything under, underneath it. Um, but even in their religions, uh, you, if you look close enough, I find I think you can find some of that uh, unity of oneness, uh, just like in Eastern mis- mysticism mm. or like Eastern religions, Buddhism, uh, Jainism, things like that, where they believe that it's all one thing, even though it's just God manifesting itself, basically. In, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, in every infinite possibility, basically. Mm-hmm. But it's all still one thing. It's like yeah. an infinite sandbox. Yeah. <laughs> and you just chisel out what you want to, you know, see. Right? <laughs> you know, like. Uh, I don't. Know. I think I can only speak for myself on that one, really. And it, and it really depends on which uh, aspect of witchcraft you're into. Like, yeah. I think for you know some of the more organized uh, religion type based ones, there would maybe you know very well be some duality for sure, um, and more hierarchy, like we said. So. Uh, or maybe, maybe not the duality, maybe just yeah. <laughs> the oneness. Um, yeah, I don't know. For me, it's just, it's just everything is one. Um, I'm one with all that is. That's, that's like my little chant that I say all the time. Um, do witches believe in reincarnation? Most of us do. Anybody I've encountered, yeah, um, I definitely do. Uh, I've had, um a lot of experiences with that and from anything you know all my research and work that I've do you done. feel like uh do you feel like you've been able to like maybe tap into past lives or oh, something yeah. like that yeah i've had experiences with that for sure visualizations and stuff during meditation have come through oh. a few times can you tell us about an experience sure yeah uh yeah and i've even like uh had ones like visions of my husband and myself in a past life together which was really oh. cool yeah um so that's fun. Uh, yeah, let me see. Um, oh yeah, so my horse uh, that I have now, I keep having this reoccurring vision of us uh, in battle together, like in a past life. So, warriors! Yeah, we were like warrior women in a past life. Um, and she actually is like full of trauma still. So um, yeah, that, that was the one that comes a lot. And so it feels really strong and it happens when I'm with her and then also when I'm away too sometimes. So. That's when I'm diving into more. Do you find, uh, have you ever like uh, like run into like a stranger or someone that you've never met before and then felt like this close, this close connection? Like, mm-hmm. feel like I've, you know, I, you know, in some other life or something, we did something together or something. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Just like a f- familiar souls is what they are, right? And definitely sometimes it's past life. Yeah. Or sometimes you, I don't know. It's so, it's weird. Have you ever had that? Uh, I actually have had some interesting, a lot, usually it is in dreams, mm. as the dreams, uh, um, I, it, I had a fascinating dream once when I was in high school where, I I, I dreamt of, um, uh, this girl that I had only vaguely just seen in passing when I was in high school, and, uh, and, and it, I can remember clear as day, we were talking in the dream, we were having this interaction, 
And then I woke up feeling like, what was that? I was like, <laughs> I've never like talked to that girl. I've never hung out with that girl. I've like only seen her a couple times, maybe in high school. But anyway, that morning I got up, I did the same thing I do every morning, just went into the lunch hall, sat down, you know, uh, with my friends. And this girl walked in the, in, into the lunch hall and sat down right beside me. That's I was hilarious. like, what the fuck? That's awesome. I was like, I, I didn't even know what to say. It was yeah, just yeah. Like, it was just the <laughs> fact that it happened, I was just like, holy Mind hell. So I was like, it was, yeah, so I was like my own weird, you know, I, I don't know. I, I feel like I get lots of strange dreams. Mm. Um, do you like interpret ger- dreams? Yeah, for sure. I have like a dream journal. My grandma got me into it, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, like she does these things without realizing either. She would never call herself a witch, but she buys me like psychic books and dream, <laughs> dream books and like, oh, this is for you. Like, thanks. Um, little does she know it really helps. So yeah, there's definitely uh, something to dream interpretation. Uh, there's a lot of different levels there as well. Yeah. Usually mine are pretty clear. Like I can make a pretty clear connection between, you know, between what it, it is in my personal life. Um, sometimes not, so um, I do write them down if they are something that uh, sticks out for sure. And then it's weird, like you know, I'll I'll go through my journals years later, and it's like you just get that light bulb. It's like, oh, that's what that meant. <laughs> yeah, I've kind of gotten into a habit now. Like, I, I, it's probably just in the last few years. Whenever I have an intense dream, I always the next day morning, I'm like looking up online, like, what do these symbols mean? And stuff. Oh like, yeah, like, yeah. I'm always like, what it can be it? overwhelming though. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's like this horrible. Oh open, yeah. Like, oh, but I find you can always, if you want, it's like there's the good omen and yeah, the bad omen. Oh, yeah. like, I'm going with good omen. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't like this <laughs> it one. It couldn't possibly be the bad omen. <laughs> I know, man. So are there different... Okay, so you say there that uh, you believe in reincarnation. Is it an infinite reincarnation? Or is there is there a point? Or like, does it go somewhere? Like a return to source? I know a lot of like religions, like I know, I think... Hinduism and stuff like that, they believe that, like, you do all your reincarnations, but it's all to, like, purge out, I think, the selfishness in you, Mm. and then after many, many, many lives of, you know, doing that, you do enough to return with the one or do that. Is there anything like that going on there? Um, maybe. I'm I'm not, like, the all all source on that, but, um... Come um, on! (laughs) For me, like, you know, I've, I've done some, um work around like soul contracts and um you know all this reincarnation and and stuff and it it seems like you know we have to learn our lessons like there's just this certain level of um of awareness and consciousness that our source is trying to you know elevate us to um and so we have to keep coming back until we have fulfilled those certain lessons for ourselves whatever you know everybody's got their own personal things to work out um i'm not really sure as far as like you know if there's an end point um and then that's what i've kind of wondered that like you know do you just get your badge at the end and then it's like okay <laughs> i'm done now I did. you don't go back anymore like i don't yeah i'm kind of curious about that myself um so i have to look more into that Hey, let's say uh, we're all explorers here. That's the, yeah, beauty. Exactly. That's the, the, <laughs> the, the, the beauty of this thing. Yeah. Um, so you seem like a, a, a pretty good witch. Thanks. You seem like you have like <laughs> some strong, good intentions. Are there bad witches? Uh, yeah, I would say so. I've come across some people on Instagram that don't strike me as the nicest witches. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing I was doing a reading the other day and someone came on and said they were right up front they were like I have you know I have someone with me um, it's a fallen angel and I would like you to read his thing and I was like what the fuck I was like, <laughs> oh I, was like my. I was like I don't think I do that <laughs> I don't, I'm not there I was like I, I don't think I'm there yet. No, yeah, there's, like, anything to do with hexes or, like, you know, voodoo shit does not interest me. I, I see that, and it's, like, to me, that's not the point. Um, I have no ill intention toward anyone. I would never use my energy and power um, in that way. So, yeah, it's all about where you're at, I guess. And, yeah, there's so many different 
variations of it and like interpretations, right? Um, yeah. Well, based upon my experience, I would believe I've I've met way more like uh, like kinder witches than nasty witches. Me too. Yeah. Um, I, I, I can't even say I really met, like I have met some maybe kind of ni- nasty witches, but, <laughs> but I, they, you know, I would say for the most part, they've all been really kind and nice. Um, and I feel like they, they want to do a lot of good in the world. They want to contribute, they want to help and, you know, in any way that they can. So the last thing I would like to do is just kind of like leave you with that I would like to let you have your last say on like what you do you've got this farm that you've got going on Mm -hmm. you know you're trying to build up your own business things you've got your Reiki thing why don't you tell the audience kind of about what that's all about like what what you're doing (laughs) okay um yeah I've been on this mission (laughs) for lack of a better word for uh probably over 10 years now of uh bringing my dream to life um so I yeah I just I don't know I went back to environmental school and that's really where it started I think I was already into spirituality and then that really brought me back to the earth and um you know living in a more conscious way um so then I started having this dream of like you know and it helped me so much with uh, my anxiety and um, health and depression and anything I had been struggling with um, and I still find that I, if I get away from the earth, I, I can feel really unwell um, pretty quickly. So um, I, I became really passionate about sharing that. And um, I just kept seeing this need in our society for the reconnection. Um, even with our food, you know, we've become so disconnected from the earth that we, we forget that it even produces our food, I think. Like, we're mm. so used to everything from a Does it come from McDonald's? Yeah, what? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Big Macs were the, like the holy grail. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. So, yeah, like we once would have a really strong relationship. Everybody would have grown their own food and, and developed that relationship with the earth and that appreciation, you know. Um, so, anyways, I'm trying to, to make this. That's okay. Keep, keep, it's a long start. That's okay. Keep it going. Uh, and so, uh, through college, I also was. Uh, reconnected with the horses and shown a different path with them like um there, there's there's so much more to them than just riding or you know competing in shows they are here as healers um and they have like this massive amount of medicine to share with us um, and i was fortunate enough to grow up with horses and always very connected with them so um that's become a huge part of of my journey as well and i offer horse medicine um, on our homestead now so uh, we've just found our place we've been there since the spring so like eight months ish now uh we're both like jacked at this point <laughs> it's been intense uh, so we're like dreaming of, of winter uh like it's gonna be any easier <laughs> maybe a little slower but um yeah so i have been hosting some drum making circles and new moon circles um i am getting the horse stuff going. So I've been doing horse therapy. Um, I do something called equine assisted learning. Um, but basically I've just developed my own style of uh, therapy with the horses. And um, so we're getting that going. And, and I just have this like vision of this healing homestead where people can come and feel safe and connect with the earth um, and their own magic, you know, um, and, and just rediscover all of that for themselves. Well, that's really great. Um, the Reiki sessions that you do, can you tell us a little bit about that? What, for, for those who are new to Reiki, what, what, what is all that? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so this guy shows up for Reiki and <laughs> <laughs> grills me like he doesn't know anything. <laughs> tell I'm me just new it. here. Yeah.
into it and and it definitely awoken something within me but at the time like I remember sitting in the class thinking I'm never gonna do this I'm never <laughs> like touching people this is weird don't tell the universe what you're not gonna do yeah right uh, I just I was just like yeah this is cool like I'll use it on myself or whatever and my kids but like that's about it I think uh you know little did I know I would be um just living for it at this point I so enjoyed it. I had another session yesterday and um I just get like lit right up off of it. So uh, it just, you know, feels like so in alignment. It's like the universe is like, yes, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, so it feels so good. But yeah, it's like, so it's universal energy um, that you get attuned when you, when you go through Reiki courses. There's three levels. Um, so there's Reiki one, Reiki two, and then uh, number three or master level, um, which I am working towards. Uh, so then you can kind of like train other people. Um, so basically, uh, it, it's a way of life as well, uh, the Reiki, and it really works in with uh, anything, you know, the ener any type of energy work. Um, so I'm reading a book right now called Psychic Reiki, and that ties in really amazingly because um, when a lot of people start doing Reiki, it starts opening up their psychic abilities, huh. um, and some people get really freaked out and, you know, stop practicing both of them, so um, it's really unfortunate. Uh, so I'm really grateful to have this yeah. <laughs> book because like, I know I, I, you know, that has happened to me yeah. so many times. So preparing you. Yeah. So and I really want to help other people who are in that same situation. So um, yeah. So you get attuned in your Reiki course, um, and then really it just like it kind of messes with you because you you kind of like don't have a, a choice but to live this life now that you know so much better, right? It just like yeah. awakens you on this crazy level that you you can't deny. So. Um, it has been this really cool process of like, it's slowly um, forcing me to <laughs> evolve and like pushing me through my own stuff and a lot of my own fear, you know, to put myself out there in that way. So, um, but it's so, so cool. And I just witness it uh, over and over and over again. So I'll just give you some examples because I find it hard to explain. I, I can just, you know, I put my hands on people and I do things intuitively and it works that's like basically what I can tell you uh, but I can see things you know like with the animals it's amazing um when I, we moved in we had this like batch of kittens within a few weeks that didn't have a mom they were only like two weeks old or something um and one had a really bad eye infection it was actually uh damaged like I could see his um the inside eyelid like you know, was not right. I'm like, oh goodness, uh, I don't know if he's gonna keep this. I actually named him Pirate because I was like, yeah, I don't, uh, this doesn't look good, dude. You're not, if it, if it stays, it's not gonna be like usable. Yeah. Um, and so I, I started doing Reiki. I was like, whatever, I'll do what I can. You know, that's always my um, attitude. And uh, I did Reiki and used a tea bag to detox it for like three days. And the guy is amazing. You'd never know anything hey, was ever great. wrong with his eyes. So I was like, Cool, that's pretty undeniable, right? <laughs> uh, and I, there's just so many stories like that that have happened. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, that's great. So you're, you know, you're getting involved with, uh, you know, wildlife, humans. You're, you're bringing them together. You got, you know, you're, you're doing healings. You're helping people out. It seems great. It seems really genuine. And I think, you know, what you're doing is, a, you know, a service to you know, others, you know, so, uh, that's great that you're doing that. Um, and I also, I want to thank you for coming on the show. I know I grilled you. I had a lot of questions. <laughs> that was okay. uh, I pro I just, that would, that would, I wrote those last night. Really? I was like, I was like, I could probably found more, yeah. uh, but you answered them all really well. Uh, so, um, thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Andrew. Thank you guys for joining us on the show, for the journey, for coming with us and uh, learning a little bit more about witchcraft. Uh, I'm going to leave in the comments the uh, de details that Lacey leaves with me about, you know, how you can get in reach uh, with her in touch if, you know, you want a reading or just want to talk to her or whatever. <laughs> She'll leave me with the information. You can, uh, you can go uh, use that if you want. Um, but other than that, I guess that pretty much wraps it up for tonight. So thanks again. Don't forget to hit the subscri subscribe button, hit the like button, share it with your friends, and until next week, stay spiritual. <laughs>